So today we are at the Mumbai Coastal Road project site, a significant project that has been undertaken by Mumbai's Municipal Corporation. The project aims to provide free and seamless travel to Mumbaikers with the help of 10.58 km stretch of coastal road. The project work is almost complete as about 83% of the work is done. So today we are going to take a closer look at how the project has progressed. The idea of a coastal road which won't change the landscape of Mumbai was first pitched in 2011. It was meant to be 35.6 km from Nariman Point to Kandivli. However, BMC could only get clearance for the south section of the project from the Central Government's Ministry of Environment and Forest in 2017. Hence, Phase 1, that is the south section of the Mumbai Coastal Road project has been under construction since 2018 and it's been built at a cost of about 13,983 crore rupees. For the project, 111 hectares of land have been reclaimed. The first phase of the project is set to be ready by mid-2024. And now, here's how this project will transform life for commuters. Firstly, most of Mumbai's traffic moves from Mumbai's suburbs to Mumbai's main island in the morning and vice versa in the evening. And as you can see, the more we move towards the main island, the city gets narrower. As a result, the routes in South Mumbai face heavy traffic congestion. Now, for the people who want to travel by road from South Mumbai to the eastern suburbs and vice versa, there is the Eastern Express Highway and the Eastern Freeway. But the people who want to travel from South Mumbai to the western suburbs by road don't have any options for seamless travel on the main island until they reach the Bandra Valley ceiling. Thus, major arterial roads such as Paddle Road, Bhula Bhai Desai Marg, Lala Lajpat Rai Marg, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan Road, Veer Savarkar Road, Nepal Sea Road and many adjoining roads experience heavy traffic flow, especially during rush hours. Now the coastal road starts from the Princess Street flyover at Marine Drive, followed by twin tunnels that end at Priya Darshani Park. From there on, it connects to the worldly end of the Bandra Worldly Scenic via Haji Ali. So if you see the map now, once the coastal road is open to Mumbai Kars, most of the traffic will get diverted to the coastal road and the other arterial roads will be decongested. The coastal road project had to go through Malabar Hill to offer quick access to the Mumbai Kars. Thus, the authorities constructed twin tunnels under Malabar Hill, which is actually one of the project's highlights. Right now we are in the twin tunnels of the Mumbai Coastal Road which is partially under the Arabian Sea. And guess what? We are at a point which is 72 meters below the Malabar Hill. 72 meters. It is equivalent to 24 storey building. The 2.07 km long twin tunnels are India's first ever undersea tunnels. They will have 3 plus 3 lanes for free flow of traffic. To prevent fire and explosion, fire resistant boards have been installed inside the tunnel capable of withstanding temperatures up to 1200 degrees Celsius for 3 hours. The tunnels also have the Sakado ventilation system, which had been used for the first time in India. Under this ventilation system, fans in a fan chamber located outside the tunnel will supply external air into the tunnels. Thus, no one will face suffocation. This entire tunnel was mined by using one single tunnel boring machine named Mavla, weighing 2800 tons. Named after Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj's mountain warfare experts, the TBM Mavla with a diameter of 12.19 meters is the largest tunnel boring machine ever deployed in India. In August 2022, the TBM Mavla created history by excavating 456.72 meter length in a month. It broke the previous global record of 455.4 meters for monthly tunneling done by a 13 meter single shield earth pressure balance TBM. Now, after exploring the twin tunnels, we are heading towards the interchanges of the coastal road. These interchanges are at the Amarsan Garden, at Worli and at Haji Ali. As you can see behind me, it is a famous Haji Ali Darga and this is the Haji Ali interchange. It is the biggest interchange of the entire coastal road project. It has around 8 roads and we are at Amdri that starts from the Worli area and connects to the Baroda Palace. If you are at the Haji Ali interchange, you can go from Nariman Point End to Worli Naka, from Haji Ali area towards Bandra, from Bandra end towards Worli Naka and in many more directions. Once the project is open for the people, the estimated travel time will be reduced to 8 minutes from 30 to 45 minutes between Marine Drive and Worli in the daytime in normal traffic conditions. 
Constructing a 10.58 km long postal road over 111 hectares of reclaimed land was never easy. The project faced several challenges. Many were alleged that the project will increase coastal erosion, harm marine life, and affect local fishermen's livelihood. Some even questioned the effectiveness of the seawall built to protect the coastal road. So, to get the answers to all such questions, we spoke to the additional municipal commissioner, Mrs. Ashwini Bhide, who has been leading the project. What were the challenges the BMC faced since day one and even till now? It had to face uh, multiple challenges. The first and the foremost challenge was since this is a road on reclamation, uh, the legal framework was uh, not suitable or suitably available uh, for the project as uh, CRZ notification, it didn't allow this kind of reclamation. So first of all, we had to get that legal provision made. So that itself was a first challenge. Uh, apart from that, there were legal challenges because despite obtaining 19 uh, different permissions from different authorities, uh, the project went into a lot of litigations because people uh, kept on challenging it and uh, there was a stay for six to eight months for the construction work, especially when the project work started and the fair season was there. What the BMC has done to tackle problems like uh, erosion and uh, uh, storms and what's the, what if floods have come, what, what, the, what are the steps BMC have taken for that? When this project was uh, basically being contemplated, National Institute of Oceanography uh, did a detailed uh, study of this and their conclusion was uh, what we are doing is just adding about a hundred meter wide uh, land to the existing uh, shore. An existing shore is uh, that way kind of, in a, it, it is there in the zigzag manner. So which allows uh, the kind of uh, erosion uh, which otherwise is not desirable. Whereas when we do reclamation, all those uh, curves are smoothened and it becomes a kind of a straight line which, which reduces uh, the process of uh, or slows down the process of erosion, that is one thing. Plus we have a, a sea wall which is done in a particular way which is a very well designed wave wall, works like a um, uh, what, uh, breakwater uh, wall and that wall is, uh, the, the, it is, the elevation is much higher than the highest high tide level. So in fact that would work as a dike to uh, this entire coast or some kind of a protection wall which will protect the city from flood, from uh, storm sur surges and other things. Uh, one of the bigger issues the BMC faced while making this project and it faced also recently, the fishermen, yes. right? Uh, so how did the BMC compensate or rehabilitate the fishermen regarding that? So we had appointed uh, Tata Institute of uh, Social Sciences yeah. and they did uh, the complete impact analysis of uh, this project on the livelihood of fishermen. And they gave us a framework with which we could uh, decide uh, the financial compensation, the monetary compensation which is to be given to fishermen community and a package of almost 135 crores. Uh, is uh, due to them as, pa as, as uh, part of that uh, compensation and 35 crores has been uh, basically distributed so far. Each and every family is getting mapped with the help of uh, fisheries department. Uh, their bank accounts are uh, getting aligned and collected and this money is getting directly deposited in their bank. When will the project will be ready? The whole project will be ready by uh, May of uh, 2024. But attempts are afoot uh, to at least uh, commission it partially. Uh, the right hand side section, whether we can commission it uh, two, three months before that, that attempts are on because the rest of the work would get over in another uh, uh, month and a half. The project was supposed to be fully operational by November 2023. However, the project missed the deadline due to protests from the local fishermen community. To get unhindered access to the Arabian Sea, the fishermen demanded that the gap between the two pillars of the bridge that will connect the Bandarwali Sea Link with the coastal rules be at least 200 meters. In contrast, as per the proposed project design, the distance between two pillars was 60 meters. After the intervention of the Chief Minister of the State, the decision to increase the gap from 60 meters to 120 meters was taken. As a result, the BMC had to change the entire design of the proposed bridge, so the deadline was pushed by seven months. The authorities say the coastal road is fully dedicated to ordinary citizens. The road will have a dedicated emergency lane for ambulances, fire brigade and buses. Apart from a faster commute option, the project also offers the city 70 hectares of green open space. 
with the 7.5 km new promenade. A cycling track, jogging track and recreational facilities will be provided in open spaces. There will be multiple underground car parking lots that can park around 1800 vehicles. The authorities say that the 7.47 km long sea wall built with armored rocks will protect the city from rising sea levels due to climatic changes in the future. And the entire project built on reclaimed land will not hurt the tidal behavior. Then, time will tell us if the project will impact the environment or not. Authorities are saying that the project will be completed by May end 2024. Once it will be ready, around 70,000 vehicles will fly on the coastal road. We hope that the project gets completed on time so that Mumbaikas can get some relief from traffic and enjoy free and seamless travel in Mumbai.